Hello guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel and to another edition of our gaming PC build. This time we are working with a pretty comfortable budget of around $1000, which makes a good base for building a really powerful and long lasting rig. With the following build you'll be more than capable of playing latest games on the highest settings in full HD at well above those magical 60 frames per second. Should I look for a guy in a mask? No mask. Just follow my signal. I thought you never wanted to meet. I don't. Starting off with our choices for the Intel platform build, for the CPU we chose the well-known Intel Core i5-4690K, which is in line with the latest Hustle refresh architecture. This quad-core CPU is a well-balanced mid-sized beast, capable of pushing any graphics card to its limit, and which additional power awaits to be released with overclocking thanks to that unlocked multiplier. For the motherboard we chose the Micro ATX model from Gigabyte, the Z97MX Gaming 5, which is although smaller and misses out few PCI Express slots, one of the most equipped choices out there in this price point, and that is confirmed by multiple reviewers out there. As for an alternative PC build based on the AMD platform, in this price point the best value product in their portfolio is definitely the FX8350 with its 8 cores. Although in games it probably won't perform as good as the Core i5, you'll probably get more out of it in software that utilizes more cores, especially if you decide to overclock it. The bottom line is that if you're only going to play games, you should get the 4690K and the Intel's platform, but if you do a lot of multi-threaded work beside gaming, like video encoding and 3D rendering, the FX8350 will have some advantages over the 69K on account of its multiple cores. In our case of the AMD platform, for the motherboard we chose the Asus M5A 99FX Pro R2.0 model. Now that's a mouthful to read. This high-end 990FX chipset-based motherboard is one of the best example of bang for your buck model. You'll get all the bells and whistles you'll need, plus a great base in case you plan to overclock the CPU. Our choice of CPU cooling for both platforms will be the ultimate value product, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO. For this price point you can't get anything better performance and silence wise and if you plan to overclock either of those CPUs you're going to need it. For the RAM we took the Kingston HyperX Fury RAM in its red color, so it suits the motherboard color scheme, although it's about $10 more on the price than the cheapest option out there in regards of 2x4GB 1600MHz kit. A total of 8GB of RAM will be plenty enough for any type of workload, especially games, and even if you plan to do some quote unquote recreational video and 3D editing. With the same name as the RAM comes in our choice of the SSD in a 240GB capacity form. The Kingston HyperX Fury model is one of the best price to performance ratio SSD product out there on the market and for its purpose it will be more than good enough. For archiving your files and in regards of the massive storage, we chose the well-known and positively reviewed Western Digital Green series of hard disk drives. For this budget we managed to squeeze in the 2TB capacity model, which is pretty decent size for an average user that thinks on a long-term storage. For the role of storing your data, you don't really need anything faster or more expensive than this. Going in for the graphics card, here we chose the very short and power efficient Zodiac GeForce GTX 970, based on the latest Nvidia's Maxwell architecture. As you probably know the reference GTX 970, the Zodiac 1 has some factory overclocking in it, roams around in the territory of R9 290 and R9 290X, which is really impressive and basically speaking, this little card is punching out top performance with only pulling around 150 watts. Zodiac put its aftermarket cooler which proved to be pretty quiet and brings out the graphics card overclocking potential. For the power supply we chose Corsair CX600M, that's the 80 plus bronze 600 watt semi-modular CX series power supply, which will make your life easier when it comes to cable management inside the case. This model is powerful enough to keep this rig up and running, and even if you plan to add another GTX 970, you will have enough power headroom left to do so. Like with our previous builds, the case we are going to recommend is the Corsair's Carbide 200R. This is an elegant and simple looking case with solid build quality considering the price point. Of course we have the USB 3 ports on the front, great in-case layout with big cutout portions for better cable management and enough room for the longer graphics card and two pre-installed fans which are always a bonus to have. To sum everything up, both platforms and configurations, Intel or AMD, offer a great value for this price point budget, not going into overkill with either of their components which make them. For around $1000 you're getting a decent future proof gaming PC build which will easily take on any game or workload you can throw at it down the road. 
That's it guys for this build, thank you once again for watching another edition of Gaming PC Build Guide within the budget of around $1000 for the month of November 2014. Remember prices may and will vary through time even if it's just one day. Be sure to tell us your thoughts or questions about this build in the comment section below, share us your personal component picks and what would you like to see us build in regards of different price points except this one. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked this video and of course be sure to subscribe to the Tactic YouTube channel for more content like this or you can check out our other videos from before.